Hey folks, Todd Coburn here with your engineering structure series. This video is on how to choose an engineering calculator and actually it's kind of a recommendation. Now when I started my engineering journey as an undergraduate, I started with the TI-35+. Plus. All you can do is punch the buttons and calculate a number. No matrix operations. It uses parentheses to help uh, figure out your orders of operations. I love this thing. However, I soon found that my uh, when I started working at Boeing as an intern, I found everybody else had a different calculator. They had these things were about ten bucks, fifteen dollars. Great little calculator. I found out they were all using this, the HP Forty One CX. Uh, this thing was about $400, $15, $400. This thing is only has one line of input. You put your numbers together. It uses reverse Polish uh, notation, which was total mystery to me and seems stupid and ridiculous. But what that does is allow you to put numbers in the stack and then operate on, on them. It works really well when you only have a single line of, of input. And I loved this calculator. Uh, I soon became proficient in it. Uh, I used it on the PE exam at the time. It also has some programming, minor programming functions, and I wrote a number of programs for this calculator as well. Uh, now, uh, later, I used this most of my career, actually, at least half. Then I found other people, and, and this held for, wow, more than a decade, maybe two decades of my career. Then I started noticing that folks were getting a larger display where they can see more items. So I stepped up to the HP 48CX. Larger display, more options, more programming, and more things you can do without having to program. Uh, great little calculator because I was beyond my major uh, computing. I think I was using this one when I started my PhD work many years later, 12 years after I finished my master's. Now, the trick with this one is because I had spent so much time programming in this one, I now had to learn a whole new programming language. So I actually never programmed this nearly as much. I was kind of disgusted. I love programming. I've done a lot of programming by then I was on to, I'd written countless uh, over a hundred uh, Fortran programs followed by over a hundred MATLAB programs which are even more powerful so I stopped programming my calculator and started relying on higher programming methods. Uh, I've used this through my career I just had to upgrade to another one the same exact calculator I found online this one's all dented but it works something's wrong with this one I haven't figured out what it is. So those calculators got me through my career. But then when I was teaching uh, finite elements and composites, I found my students were struggling. And some of the best students or the most uh, successful students were using the TI Inspire. Now, there's also an HP version that uh, uh, folks were leaning on. But the uh, TI Inspire uh, CX2 CAS calculator appeared to be uh, the, the one of choice. There were a higher number of students programming it, and the ones that were programming it were doing the best programs using this calculator. Sometimes not <clears throat> your most typical A-plus student. These were students who were uh, maybe not as natural as some of the academics in terms of being able to just recall all these things and whip out mathematical methods, but some of my students that were smart but needed more time and they systematically, they think in a systematic fashion. If you think systematically, this follows us logically, then programming is a, a wide open field for unleashing your power, which can be more than the most natural quick number person. See, now, the reason I didn't really need a calculator at that time, because I was very proficient in my calculator of choice and in other programming and in hand analysis methods. However, uh, I started wanting to help my students more. So I went ahead and bought one. I actually bought the wrong one. I bought the one that's uh, not the CAS and has a lot limited, more limited capability. It's also a great calculator. So I immediately bought this one as well. So I could start programming and helping my students in composites and finite elements 
to perform better. Uh, so, uh, and I've only begun to do this. I've only written a few uh, or recorded a few videos, and I'm still learning as I go because these calculators, when they get this deep, uh, require time and attention. Do not buy this calculator if you're not willing to invest the time to learn how to use it. You're going to need to read the book. You're going to need to practice some programming. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You're going to be fumbling around. The capability of this calculator makes it difficult to use uh, carelessly, I'll say. Other calculators uh, may are a lot easier to just pick up and punch numbers intuitively. This thing is going to require some study. This one, when I first got it, required study. Otherwise, I would have been lost. I was doing, uh, I was working in, I was in engineering still, an engineering student, and I was working at Boeing, so I was using this every day. I was exploring the capabilities. I was reading the book, and I was programming. Uh, and that made me a super user for this calculator beyond many of my coworkers and other students. If you want to use a calculator with this amount of power, you're also going to need to invest time and effort. Now, the reason I'm recommending this is I've found that students uh, are going to need a good calculator, one that can do matrix operations. Now, you're not going to need this at like the statics and uh, some of those entry level class levels. And some classes may not allow you to use this due to its programmable function functions. Also, uh, I understand you cannot use this calculator for the PE exam when you take the EIT and the PE in California. Some other states allow it. I don't believe California does. And it may not be allowed on the ACT, not sure. Uh, you're going to need to check into that. So getting this may leave you short when you get to those other. You may need a second calculator for those kind of exams. However, for your daily calculations in engineering and in industry, something like this can really streamline your work. Let's uh, talk about that a little further. Now, the reason I'm encouraging you to think about buying this calculator now is if you're in Cal Poly, if you're uh, looking for, a, if you're in industry and looking for a great calculator, this is a great choice. In industry, you want all the power you can get at your fingertips, and this is like a little computer running around with you, uh, but not too much of a computer. It's still a calculator. If you're in the program at Cal Poly Pomona, by the time you get to composites and finite elements, you're going to need a calculator that is very proficient at doing large uh, at doing matrix operations and even large matrix operations for finite elements. You're also going to need one that can solve simultaneous equations. Uh, and usually the best way to do that is using matrix methods. And uh, what I'm going to do is what I want to see if I only have things that all my tests in composites and finite elements can be solved by hand. However, if you solve these composite and finite element program, uh, problems by hand, I have to keep those problems extremely small. And what I can, and also students who uh, get frozen can get really locked up. There's so many calculations, the chances of them making a mistake in any given operation become astronomical if you're one of those students that frees up or a little bit careless. So what I find is it can be very difficult to find credit for someone who is bumbling around making little mistakes on something that has as many calculations as those classes require. However, if they have a basic knowledge of the calculator and matrix operations and have become proficient in its use, then that makes the matrix part and the simultaneous equation part and the uh, those difficult mathematical problem parts much more achievable. And also, if they learn to program, then we can make a lot of little simple redundant calculations uh, quite easy. It's a matter of knowing the calculator, knowing how to use it to dispatch those kind of problems basically without error. Now your error comes in with the entry or when you start trying to do higher things with pulling together 
data from different programs. Now, so for that reason, I've been encouraging, and the reason I'm encouraging you to use this, there are others like their HPs that also do similar functions and maybe even more powerful. However, I'm only one guy I can only do so much content, and I have chosen this because it seemed to be the choice of most of my top students in this area, and for that reason, I am working on uh, tools for and videos to help you program your calculator for the things we're going to need. I'm starting with composites. I've written some stuff for finite elements, and I'm going to start putting more and more content for my Aero 3261 and 3271 classes, the Structures 1 and Structures 2. If you have my Structures handbooks, either of them or both, you will find that some of these programs will help you to do some of the methods quicker. Okay, I only have a couple of those posted right now. I'm posting more all the time. So if you're in the engineering program at Cal Poly Pomona Aerospace, or even mechanical or civil, you can uh, uh, you can benefit if you get one of these calculators. You can go and follow my videos. Even if you're not in composites, I'm working on composite videos right now. You can learn on how to make a program that's usable. You can learn from those. And I'm, I'm getting more and more content. I'll try and get some more for structures one and structures two this semester as well. So if you do choose this calculator, you can go to my website, to my YouTube channel. You can go to my TI Inspire playlist and find the helps that I have there and start learning to program your calculator so you become a super user. That's the benefit of this one. Uh, if you have a similar HP that does a similar function or other calculator, feel free and uh, you will just need to do that. And you can still, you still may benefit by watching some of my programs because it'll teach you a little bit about programming that won't translate directly, but some of it will and may help you with this uh, program. So TI uh, CX2 CAS, TI Inspire CX2 CAS is the calculator that I recommend. Once again, you won't be able to use this for the California PE, at least not at this time. You may not be able to use it for other tests. You should be able to use it for most of your engineering classes. And it would be a great one for uh, industry as well. That's what I got for you. Uh, check it out. Oh, there will be a link in the video if you want to connect directly so you get the recommended one. You can use that link. Enjoy. And best of luck.